Plus, we have uh, the senator on the line. Here he comes. Hello. There he is. Hi, Senator McCain. How are you? Well, I think this uh, connection is brought to you by the Democratic National Committee. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Not bad. Do you know my email address, Senator McCain? I can't remember. <laughs> yeah, McCain.com. Oh, okay. <laughs> so how, how are you? Doing? All I'm right, old friend. I'm glad to have a chance to talk to you again, especially on um, upcoming Veterans Day. And uh, a lot of some of our listeners may not know that you served honorably in the United States Marine Corps. And uh, I know you're proud of that part of your life. Today is the uh, 240th birthday of the United States Marine Corps. Yep. And, uh, you know, I used to have a joke, you know, a friendly rivalry between the United States Navy and the Marine Corps. I used to say that when I graduated from the Naval Academy that I tried to get in the Marine Corps, but my parents were married. So some years <laughs> later, some years later, my son Jim joins the Marine Corps. And uh, I'm very proud of his service in the Marine Corps and comes home and says, Dad, you know, the Marines are part of the Navy Department, the men's department. So... The, the 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 friendly rivalry and exchanges of views goes on. We'll be happy to know that uh, Zach Cates, of course, which you were instrumental in getting mm -hmm. the Secretary of the Navy to overturn that waiver, is going to flight school at Pensacola, 0700 hours December 4. Well, we're proud of him, and I'm glad we were able to help, and I'm sorry that occasionally these things get... Uh, have to get rise to the level of your and my attention, but uh, that's also uh, one of the reasons why <clears throat> we have a responsibility as well as a privilege. And if you hadn't brought it to my attention, it was Zach would probably not be doing that. And so, it wouldn't that's be doing what <laughs> your and my job are all about. So I thank you. There, uh, but it's a strong lesson too um, to people with cancer, people who had cancer, which was the fundamental uh, foundation. And uh, mantra of the I'm the I'm his cattle ranch for kids with cancer, and that is to, not to be defined by your disease, and don't let anybody tell you you can't do something. And right. Zach had had cancer when he was nine years old, but he doesn't have cancer now. So they see cancer on his paperwork and say, well, you can't do this. Well, yeah, he can do it. So. Well, I'm glad we were able to fix it. And by the way, I also am a melanoma survivor of many years ago, and uh, uh, I, I think that. Yeah, obviously, we are, thank God, we re, a lot of us recover and um, are able to go on with our lives. And uh, Zach should not have ever had to go through what he went through, but that that's what we're all about. And, and again, uh, again, one of the greatest buglers in the history of the United States Marine Corps was one Don Imus, my friend. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, see, but I tell the story, like I was telling a bunch of cowboys the other day, uh, about the time I was in the jungles of Vietnam killing the Kong, and Wyatt was happened to be sitting there and unfortunately looked at me and said, no, 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 you didn't, Dad. You, you, you played the bugle at Camp Pendleton. I said, well, w whatever. So, well, <laughs> was that, so tell me about 13 soldiers. Oh, uh, uh, Mark Salter and I, my beloved friend and I, uh, put together a book about 13 soldiers and each major conflict we were in, men and women and others who, I mean, men and women, uh, African-American and others that uh, fought in different individual stories of the conflicts that they were in, ranging from a guy named Joseph Martin who joined the Revolutionary War at 15 and went through incredible experiences to Oliver Wendell Holmes Jr., who was an idealist uh, when the Civil War uh, took him into into the into battle, and uh, obviously he became one of our great journalists uh, later on, and to uh, other people who, well, Charles Black, who was an African-American, <clears throat> fought in the War of 1812, uh, uh, Pete Salter, who fought a hand-to-hand -hand fight in Korea, a beloved friend of mine named Leo Thorsness, who I was also, who also ended up in prison with me, who fought one of the great battles, uh, air battles of the Vietnam War. He fought off MiG, SAMs, any aircraft fire, all to protect a downed American air crew. And uh, Monica Lynn Brown, who was a frontline woman, frontline medic in Afghanistan, she risked her life to save others, which, by the way, should put to rest any of this controversy about women serving in combat roles as long as they meet the standards in my view they're fully qualified was there any uh, person 
maybe not even in this book, but is there any person who stands out in the history of our country as the greatest warrior ever? Mm, I think it depends on the criteria you, you use, but I think um, I, I think there's very little doubt that pops to mind Dwight David Eisenhower as far as his genius that was so important in World War II to to grant i'm sure some of my of our southern listeners wouldn't agree with that but uh you know the the war and the civil war was really stumbling around back and forth and without much uh, result because of poor generals and um grant uh, you know there was a lincoln found ulysses grant and uh, that was pivotal pivotal in ending our our civil war and and i don't think there's any doubt that there are some individual heroes, uh, like uh, a guy named Chesty Puller, who was a sure. Marine who lit literally led the Marines in the Chosin Reservoir, quote, retreat, unquote. That's one of the great s stories in Marine Corps history, which I know you're very well aware of. It's always an honor, Senator McCain, to have you on this program. It's an honor to know you, and thank you for your magnificent service all these years and continuing service to us and our country. I appreciate it. And I hope everybody buys this book, uh, 13 Soldiers by uh, Senator John McCain and Mark Salter. Does Mark still work for you? I uh, know, but we're still the very closest and dearest friends. What is he doing? Uh, he's writing, and he's doing a lot of uh, writing for different people. And okay. also, he's, 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 he's a very gifted writer, as you know. I've met him a couple times. He's a great guy, so thank yeah. you very much, by Senator way, by the way, just before we leave, I, I was just a few days ago at the uh, at the memorial service for my old friend Fred Thompson. He was uh, he was a larger than life guy, and, and mixed uh, the. He said there wasn't that much difference between entertainment and politics, and I think he was right. It was <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, Senator McCain, thank you very much. Thank you, my friend. Bye. Uh, Eleven minutes now until the hour.